Hey everybody, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. We are looking at a complete solar-powered aquaponics setup. We don't have the fish yet, so I can't quite say complete, but everything runs and functions now. There's a battery with expansion room for a second battery. There is a solar charge controller with bus bars and fuse block and a cigarette lighter adapter, which I'll explain in a little bit here. We have a fish tank. And then we have the grow bed, mostly filled with gravel. Now, what's complete is when I push this fuse in, it starts the water pumping, which will fill up the water level in the grow bed. And you can see it rising here. And this is really cool, except for the impeller on the water pump, which is now 12 volts and plugged in here, um, fused and run over to the battery. And of course, I'll show you there's solar panels charging it. But except for the impeller and the water pump, there's no moving parts. The beauty of the system is, as the water level rises in the tube, it's going to fill the pipe and f cause a siphon effect which will then drain the water level down to here to the bulkhead fitting and then it'll suck air emptying the pipe filling the pipe the tube with air stopping the siphon effect the water pump runs 24 7 or will be once I'm done um, fine-tuning the water pump will run 24 7 continuously filling the level back up and as you can see the levels rising in here but I love the clear tubing which gives me the visual and in a minute it's going to start to flow now it's a very fast cycle but this is a very small tank uh, with a larger system you won't have such a fast cycle now it's starting to drain into the water into the aquarium and I've got it raised above the level so that it causes a lot of splash inside the aquarium and it's raised above the water it causes a lot of spat, splash and it feeds uh, mixes oxygen in I have to refill this tomorrow now that I have it fully functioning I've, I know where my water levels are going to be now you can see the uh, the level here continues filling this is a fully automated system everybody it is a really really cool fully automated system now that water level is starting to go higher in the inside the tank it's above this level now and once it goes and fills this tube it's going to cause an instantaneous siphon effect and drain the water level all the way back down again and it's really cool you'll see literally how long this cycle is there it goes it's filling and boom siphon effect now we have water gushing can you see that in there yeah, we have water gushing into the uh, aquarium, and that will lower the level at a relatively rapid pace in the grow bed. This is going to be filled with gravel nearly flush to the top. And that will continue siphoning until the level comes down to the bulkhead fitting, and it sucks air again. And the idea is we are flooding and draining the soon-to-be uh, plants the roots of the plants that will be growing in here will be flooding and draining on regular intervals when the flooding gives water and nutrients the uh, fish which are going to be in here once this is run for quite a few days maybe a week I'm going to put fish in here but I want everything to cycle through and through and let bacteria get in there and the natural bacteria to build up its uh, natural environment. So the fish nutrients, so fish waste, will be sucked in through the water pump and put into the tank. Oh, there it goes. We're sucking air. And that's going to bubble for a minute, which is greatly oxygenating the water in here. <clears throat> and there we go. It's hitting bottom. Boom. Siphon effect done. And then it continues and starts over again. The cycle starts over and starts to fill the tank. Now, the water level was down to here when it siphons, so this is not exactly precise. That might end up in any random point here, but it'll soon catch up. 
but it gives me an idea, a rough idea, where the water level is. But once it's siphoned out, it's down to here. Now the fish nutrients are going to come up through here, and I'm going to put holes in this tube and run it along the edge of this tank, or this uh, grow bin, so that nutrients are evenly spread along the far end of the tank. And then the water has to flush through to get to the bulkhead fitting on this side. And that'll evenly distribute all those nutrients. And then the roots of the plants and bacteria will break down the nutrients into um, energy for the plants and cleaning their, thereby cleaning the water for the fish. So we have a closed loop system here where the fish are feeding the plants and the plants are filtering the fish water once it's fully established with the fish and the plants and then we have a closed loop and we don't have to add any external input except for fish food and depending on what you grow and what type of fish you have the plants could help feed the fish as well and some people put earthworms you'll see here that I have a, a little bit of dry space between the high water level and the top of the container. This will be filled with gravel and over here we have a little bit of an uneven surface on this ground. The ground is not level so I, I, that was um, unforeseeable. I may level this off, I may not, but anyway there's going to be room for earthworms to grow in here as well. And the earthworms will further break down solid waste and uh, provide more nutrients for the plants. So we have a really cool system. Now we'll go over to the solar power side of the whole system. Now we're starting the secondary, the second cycle since I started talking to you. And you get an idea. It's a pretty uh, constant, there it comes, and boom, we've got the siphon effect. And then we start reducing the level of the water in the tank. You can actually see it starting to go down. And that water pump runs 24-7. There's no on and off cycles of the water pump so that it reduces wear and tear on the pump. Um, cycling a pump on and off more often will cause more wear on the pump. And so cycling is not as, uh, not as good a thing. You'll also see I'm getting more oxygen here. There's bubbles. Um, once I have that split out and, and flowing out various holes, then I'll get a little bit more oxygen oxygenation once that water is hitting the gravel as well. That's going to help um, put oxygen into the system. Now you see we're still siphoning. And then the water level is sinking down, down, down to a certain level <clears throat> until we get, catch, we suck air into the tube, the bulkhead fitting. Once we get down below a certain point, we start to suck air. It's still siphoning, so it's, it's fallen below the level it was. It's still siphoning. And so we have quite a, a, a range from low point to high point, the low water mark to high water mark, which is exactly what we want to, for health for your plants. So your plants get water, nutrients, and oxygen to the roots. So it's a very, very good system. So, over to the power side of the system. This is just a basic solar power setup. This, um, for those of you who watch my daily videos, and, and for those of you who don't watch my daily videos, by the way, I make videos pretty much every day and have been for six years, five or six years now, on the do-it-yourself world uh, channel. So you can check out my videos and you can go back in time to see where I was living in a camper. I lost everything a while back and moved into a camper and I was totally, totally like in the woods off the grid and had nothing. This, some of you may recognize from my survival pickup truck. Um, it was a uh, Pimp My Bug Out Survival Vehicle. Uh, it was the name of the video, I think. And I had a really, really cool system in there. I had um, in my pickup truck with a sleeper top, a camper shell, I had this slide out bed system with solar power and everything. I kept it all these years and this is, I took it off this part today and screwed it onto my my shelf and everything is exactly how it was in the truck. 
So what we have here, and I'm going to brush it off. i got to get a brush and clean it. What we have here is a simple solar charge controller. And that is connected. The, the batteries are connected to the charge controller battery connection. Then we have wire going up and across and over to solar panels outside, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we have the uh, another wire coming from the batteries to a fuse block. The negative goes to a distribution block and the positive goes there's a there's a copper distribution block on a positive and then we have our fuses so we have uh, the water pump here which I can pull out as needed to shut it off and that's constantly running right now that's currently running and then I have another fuse which isn't currently hooked up but what we're going to have is um, some LED lighting out here in the uh, greenhouse powered by this battery bank uh, currently one battery with expansion for two okay and we're gonna have uh, 12 volt and uh, USB charging power out here for when I'm working in the greenhouse and maybe play some music or uh, charge a phone or camera so this is a really cool setup here and <clears throat> very simple the water pump is running here 24 7 off the battery and the solar panels which I'll show you in a minute here are charging through the charge controller are charging the battery and it's a pretty cool system so let's go outside and see the solar panels now for now it's raining out and I took two Harbor Freight solar panels these are 15 watt solar panels that is a uh, two out of a set of three uh, it was a 45 watt solar panel set and I've got as I said two out of the three set up here and wired together and going inside to the to charge the battery through the solar charge controller these are amorphous solar panels to some of you that means nothing but to those of you who have knowledge the amorphous solar panels are producing power even now on a cloudy rainy day so really good stuff I just adjusted the angle so the rain washes them better they haven't been used in a while now they're 15 watts each so together I have 30 watts and on a good full sunny day or whatever with the amorphous I'm not sure what they're putting out right now on a cloudy day or on a rainy day but they are producing power up to 30 watts with the two panels together and I'll take you back in and tell you what the uh, water pump is using okay down inside here it's hard to see with the glare I have floating I'm gonna put a weight on that yet but I have a 12 volt DC water pump it's a submersible water pump with a little filter screen on top it was um what was this it was ten dollars I think it was really cheap it only takes five watts of energy there comes that water flowing in really flows in and oxygenates that water so that's gonna be great see it's gonna be really good for the fish when, when I get them in here the water pump only uses five watts continuous so um, it's been a long day I can't quite do the math in my head but that's gonna be roughly a uh, hundred and maybe 20 watts I think of power uh, 120 watt hours in a in a 24 hour period that we're gonna be pulling out and that's what that battery has to provide well when there's no sunlight it'll be pulling 120 watt hours of power out of that battery on a, on a let's say a dark day um, during nighttime it's going to be pulling on its own running off that battery the water pump will be pulling out uh, 50 60 watts I think in a, in a nighttime period so but those being amorphous panels they'll produce power even on not fully sunny periods so mornings and evenings as well so I'm gonna get a little bit more power out of them than I normally would from a different type of panel but let's say about 60 watt hours is what this battery has to provide in uh, night times so it's very gentle on the battery and uh, that battery should last years in this situation but I will be adding more aquaponics tanks more batteries more solar panels and a lot more of everything so stay tuned everybody um, gonna let this cycle for a few days to a week until we get all the the water cycled through quite a few times 
There's some insects that died in there that are floating around. I don't know if you can see right now with the glare and with the humidity is so high right now. And then the dirt and sand that didn't wash off, the stones are eventually going to cycle through. Um, it'll all settle down to the bottom with time. And then once I'm fully comfortable with the cleanliness of the gravel and the water clarity, we'll, add, we'll introduce the fish. And by then the bacteria will have done their job and made it a good, healthy, natural environment for plants and fish. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. I bought cheap vinyl tubing. Big mistake. Big bad mistake. Um, the cheap vinyl tubing was crimping itself. It was collapsing under its own weight. You can see here an extra piece of tubing just collapsing under its own weight, just sitting here. It, it, and it was actually folding and crimping itself off. Okay, and not it. The siphon wasn't working. I took normal baling wire and wrapped it around the tubing, which forces the tubing to stay round, and it does not collapse. So if anybody runs into that issue, there's a simple fix: baling wire wrapped around it keeps it from collapsing. Because the tubing is just so flexible, it just goes blah and lays down in itself. It collapses on itself, and um, the baling wire, because the tubing isn't really forcing it, there's no force on it. The baling wire is stronger than the heavy, the, the, the strength of the tubing trying to collapse on itself. So it keeps the tubing from collapsing. It works. It's a, it's a great, great little thing. The siphon idea and everything else I've been studying for years. That's not my normal invention or my original invention. Um, this is very common knowledge. In the simplest of all aquaponic setups, there's no moving parts. There's nothing. Uh, building a bell siphon for me was too complicated with this setup. With a small tank, it just wasn't going to be worth it to build a bell siphon for me. It would have cost a lot more money. A piece of tubing wound around like this gives you a siphon effect. Perfect. It's a great beginner setup. Um, anyway, the wire was my original idea. That's, that was my idea to stop that from collapsing. But you shouldn't have cheap tubing. Anyway, there you go, guys. A really cool, functioning, solar-powered aquaponics lab set up in my fully off-grid greenhouse. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for updates on the off-grid, solar-powered aquaponics lab once we start adding fish, top off the gravel, and add some plants. This is exciting.